Starship's crazy development is turning many things we only dreamed of before into reality. I believe many of you, like me, have dreamed of Starship flying and landing in the holy land of the aerospace industry, Florida. And I'm here to tell you that soon this won't be a dream anymore. SpaceX and the FAA have created clear scenarios for this, featuring many elements we've never even thought about. So what other crazy milestones is Starship leading us to? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Did you know Starship set its footprint in Florida long ago with a launch system at LC-39A, where SpaceX currently launches the Falcon 9. But in 2024, everything seemed to become clearer as agencies begin evaluating the environmental impact statement for operating Starship and Super Heavy in Florida. After considering and comparing other potential options like SLC-50, LC-39A remained the choice of the FAA and SpaceX. Once everything was determined by May, the EIS preparation process began. After 45 days of public scoping, the FAA just released the draft EIS. It can be said that with just this draft, we can imagine the future of Starship. This notice clearly shows the roadmap for completing the EIS, the new design of Starship, the roles of organizations, and the issues that need to be resolved by SpaceX. Starship's design is something we've talked about before, but this statement has also other important plans. Proposed action for Starship's operation. Specifically, in the Proposed Action section, the FAA clearly states, SpaceX proposes to construct launch, landing, and other associated infrastructure at and in proximity to LC-39A. The proposal also includes Starship Super Heavy launches at LC-39A, recoverable Super Heavy booster and Starship landings at LC-39A or on a drone ship, and expendable Super Heavy booster and Starship landings in the ocean. Perhaps, maybe you, like me, were immediately interested in one of these, right? And of course, it was landing Starship and Super Heavy on the drone ship that perked your ears. Speaking of drone ships, we definitely think of the Falcon 9. After many years of application, SpaceX conducted about 260 attempts with this method. Combined with the landing zone, this method has helped SpaceX consistently create rocket landings and reuse records, which sets them apart from the rest. And now, it'll be applied to Starship. May I remind you, it's Starship the world's largest rocket, and it'll be landed on a drone ship in the ocean in the future. Like Falcon rockets, Starship will fly up, and then the booster will separate from the ship. With the Falcon 9, its booster often lands on the drone ship in about eight and a half minutes. With Starship, that may take a little longer at around 10 minutes or more. After separating from the ship, Super Heavy will use engines and grid fins to navigate and decelerate. Finally, it'll then have a vertical landing on the drone ship. Those would be the similarities between Starship and Falcon 9 when using this method, but Starship is designed to be fully reused. So the story afterward will be the new milestones that Starship will write for the first time. And after a long journey, perhaps just in orbit or further to the moon or Mars, the ship will return, go through the re-entry process, and then land on the drone ship as its companion. This will clearly be a new milestone, more impressive than any previous feat in the aerospace industry. The option of landing on a drone ship for Starship has great potential with many advantages. Firstly, it'll increase flexibility because the drone ship can move anywhere to pick up Super Heavy and the ship, thereby reducing the complexity of the two-stage control process. Secondly, landing on a drone ship in the ocean will help avoid risks to humans and property much more than land-based methods. But if this method is applied, there will be a few changes that need to be made. The first, I think you're all very interested in, as soon as I talk about this method, is the landing leg. You're probably wondering, what landing legs? Well, current starships don't have landing legs, and that's not suitable for this landing method either way. Previously, Starship did have legs, but they were eventually removed to reduce mass and were more suitable for the launch tower and OLM system. Frankly, I'm a big fan of landing legs, so I've always thought adding landing legs was clearly necessary, not only for landing on a drone ship, but also for landing on the moon or Mars. So, 
Are landing legs gonna make a comeback? Or will the drone ship have a new design to match the legless starship? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Anyways, with the drone ship, many changes are currently uncertain, but I believe it must greatly increase its basic capabilities, including durability and size. Unlike the Falcon Booster, which only has a maximum thrust of 770 tons or 1.7 million pounds, the EIS has clearly shown that the future Super Heavy has a thrust of more than 10,000 tons or 23 million pounds. While the ship is more than 2,800 tons or nearly 6.3 million pounds. Of course, that is the maximum thrust when lifting off. When landing, the Falcon Booster, Super Heavy, and ship will only use a few engines, so the thrust will be much smaller. But the aforementioned comparison still partly shows the difference between Starship Stages and the Falcon Booster. Thus, this will require the drone ship to be larger and more durable than current ones, in order to withstand the huge thrust and dry mass of up to hundreds of tons from 150 meter high rockets. Don't forget that SpaceX will be conducting a lot of launches each year, so the drone ships also have to be capable of handling the craziest of frequencies. Despite the challenges, the prospect of landing Starship on a drone ship is incredibly exciting. It's a potential game changer for space travel logistics. We'll just have to wait and see if this method is ultimately chosen, but the possibilities are thrilling, so stay tuned. But hey, landing on a drone is not the only thrilling option. SpaceX and the FAA have revealed additional methods. The FAA has specified that both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship can touch down at LC-39A, the same pad from which they were launched. This involves the incredible Mechazilla arm catching them mid-air. SpaceX is chasing this ambitious goal and will take the first step with the upcoming Flight 5. I believe the launch and landing process with the Mechazilla arm in Florida will mirror what they're doing in Texas, or should I say what they're attempting to do. After a few minutes of flight, the booster will separate from the ship, navigate back to the launch complex, and land on the tower. Or in the tower? The ship's journey will be longer. As detailed in the drone ship's section, after completing its mission, the ship will re-enter the atmosphere and land using the tower, just like its booster companion. Regarding the infrastructure supporting this initiative, the FAA highlighted key elements in their background statement. On the map, we can identify NASA-approved zones, such as the Air Separation Unit Area, Deluge Pond, and facilities dedicated to propellant generation and storage. However, the standout feature is undoubtedly the Catch Tower. This revelation indicates that SpaceX will have at least two towers at LC-39A, each serving distinct purposes, one for launching and the other catching. Incredible, isn't it? With this approach, SpaceX can continue to employ the current landing design without landing legs. This method offers the advantage of expediting repairs and refurbishments, thus reducing turnaround time. Not only is this visually impressive, but it also sets SpaceX apart, as no other organization has achieved this feat. But in return, SpaceX will need to master this method thoroughly. Landing with a Mechazilla arm demands utmost precision and entails significant risks to surrounding infrastructure. LC-39A hosts the Falcon 9 launch pad, a critical asset for NASA, underscoring the importance of flawless execution. Nevertheless, landing with the Mechazilla arm promises to captivate the world's attention. The journey will likely begin with Flight 5, anticipated to occur late next month. After discussing the two methods mentioned earlier, the FAA also presented another option termed expendable, meaning that the Super Heavy and ship would not be reused and would instead be landed in the Atlantic Ocean. The FAA's statement included mapped regions with specific distances and latitudes for these landings. However, this method is certainly not ideal. Rather, it serves as a contingency plan for exceptional circumstances. For now, I'd like to ask you, which method do you prefer for Starship? Drone ship or Mechazilla arm? Feel free to share your choice in the comment section down below. I'll be eagerly awaiting your response. Regardless of the chosen method, however, SpaceX faces several tasks ahead. Bringing the giant rocket to Florida involves collaborating closely with the FAA and numerous other organizations to finalize the EIS. Following the draft, they'll gather public comments, make necessary modifications, 
finalize the official EIS, and move towards making critical decisions. They also need to master the landing soon. The next challenge will be Flight 5, which will pave the way for catching the Super Heavy with the Mechazilla arm. Only after achieving this milestone will SpaceX consider applying it in Florida or transitioning to drone ship landings. It's a rough road ahead, but nothing is impossible. So let's share our eagerness and await the outcome. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.